Galaxies are tiny, distant, faint objects that usually require a telescope that has a large aperture and a long focal length to get the best resolution possible. However, if all you have is a small or medium-sized telescope, you can still photograph galaxies. And these telescopes work the best on galaxy cluster targets. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I collect my first light on one of the most popular galaxy cluster targets, Markarian's Chain. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. Markarian's Chain is a galaxy cluster group located in the constellation of Virgo. It's a stretch of galaxies that forms part of the Virgo cluster. When viewed from Earth, the galaxies lie along a smoothly curved line. Charles Messier first discovered two of the galaxies, Messier 84 and Messier 86 in 1781. The other galaxies were discovered by William Herschel and are known primarily by their catalog numbers in the New General Catalog, or NGC, published in 1888. The chain was named after the Armenian astrophysicist Benjamin Markarian, who discovered their common motion in the early 1960s. The bright members of the chain are visible through small telescopes, and larger telescopes can be used to view the fainter galaxies. Near the center of the chain are a pair of interacting galaxies, NGC 4438 and NGC 4435, about 50 million light years away from Earth, also known as Markarian's eyes. So here's a quick rundown of the equipment I'll be using for tonight's imaging session. I'll be using a medium-sized telescope in the form of the Orion Eon 104EDX2 triplet apochromatic refractor. And for imaging, I'll be using my trusty one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600 MC Pro. And as per usual, this will be mounted on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG. And to maintain the natural colors as well as minimize the light pollution, I'll be using the Optolong L Quad Enhance broadband light pollution filter. So with all that being said, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of Markarian's Chain.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have completed my polar alignment, star alignment, focusing routines, and guiding procedures. So I'm now inside of APT and my imaging session for Markarian's chain is currently in progress. So each of these individual fuzzy dots are their own individual galaxy. And I think that's just really incredible. And you can see how they form a chain structure in this curved path here where my cursor is. And it's just really remarkable to see all of these galaxies in the same field of view. And the largest galaxy, I believe, in the chain is Messier 86, which is this faint dot right here where my cursor is. So unfortunately, I had a bit of a late start on this imaging session. I was having some connection issues with my guide camera. And although I was able to resolve the issue, it did cut into my integration time. And looking at the weather forecast, tonight will be the only clear night that I'll have for a while. So my goal is to grab as many three-minute exposures as I can tonight, and I'll use that data to create the overall image. But apart from that, everything seems to be going pretty smoothly for my first light on this subject. So as per usual, I'll continue to monitor the imaging session and we'll just see how the night progresses. How's it going everyone? So it's a little after 1.40 a.m. right now and I was able to do a quick focus check then I came back to Markarian's chain to continue the imaging session. So it's late May into early June right now, and in the Northern Hemisphere, we're in late spring, and that marks the end of galaxy season. So during the springtime, the Earth is in a position where when we observe the night sky, we're looking into distant galaxies. And for me personally, I like to use galaxy season as an opportunity for me to study these objects, to learn more about their composition as well as their structure. A galaxy is a system of stars, stellar remnants, interstellar gas, dust, and dark matter bound together by gravity. Most of the mass in a typical galaxy is in the form of dark matter, with only a few percent of that mass visible in the form of stars and nebulae. Supermassive black holes are a common feature at the centers of galaxies. It's estimated that there are between 200 billion to 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe. Galaxies are classified into one of three categories, illustrated by the Hubble sequence diagram, which was published by Edwin Hubble in 1926. The first category are the elliptical galaxies. The Hubble sequence rates elliptical galaxies on the basis of their ellipticity, ranging from E0 being nearly spherical up to E7, which is highly elongated. These galaxies have an ellipsoidal profile, giving them an elliptical appearance regardless of the viewing angle. Elliptical galaxies are believed to make up approximately 10 to 15% of galaxies in the Virgo supercluster, which includes Markarian's chain. 
The second category are the spiral galaxies. Spiral galaxies consist of a rotating disk of stars and interstellar medium, along with a central bulge of older stars. Extending outwards from the bulge are relatively bright arms. In the Hubble sequence, spiral galaxies are listed as type S, followed by a letter which indicates the degree of tightness of the spiral arms and the size of the central bulge. A SA galaxy has tightly wound, poorly defined arms and possesses a relatively large core region. On the other side, an SC galaxy has open, well-defined arms and a small core region. Another type of spiral galaxy is the barred spiral galaxy. These galaxies have a linear bar-shaped band of stars that extends outward to either side of the core, then merges into the spiral arm structure. In the Hubble sequence, these are designated by an SB, followed by a lowercase letter, which indicates the form of the spiral arms in the same manner as normal spiral galaxies. Examples of barred spiral galaxies include our own Milky Way galaxy and NGC 1300. The third category are the irregular galaxies. These galaxies have no distinct shape and are often chaotic in appearance with no central bulge or spiral structure. Some irregular galaxies were once spiral or elliptical galaxies, but were deformed by an uneven external gravitational force. An example of an irregular galaxy is NGC 2337 in the constellation of Lynx. So, the next time you observe or image a galaxy, try to see if you can figure out its identity, its composition, and its detail. Because if you're able to do that, you'll soon discover, just as I did, that you'll have a deeper appreciation for these magnificent objects in our universe. Well, my target dove behind some trees and I have to wrap things up for tonight. I was able to capture two hours and some change of data tonight, and I'm hoping this data will be adequate enough to create a respectable image. Although I didn't get the integration time that I wanted, I'm still very excited to have been given the opportunity to take a first light on another new subject. And I look forward to the new improvements that I'll be able to make next galaxy season. So, you know the drill by now, I gotta work on my calibration frames, and once I finish that, I'll pack everything up, head back home, and just sit back and chill for the weekend. So, Thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of Markarian's chain at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies.